Now here's a sample of some Excel data that you might get. And we want to look at how are we going to format this because right now this is not really easy to read. It's jumbled. It doesn't all fit. And to be honest, it could be a whole lot better. So the only difference that I see between this and the stuff I used to get working in back office applications is my data usually consumed a lot more rows and a lot more columns. So this is just a kind of little subset simplified, but everything we have, we can learn to use and put into good effect. So let's make this information a little bit more readable. Now, here's the first thing I'm going to point out. Now, in a previous video, we talked about how if numbers don't always fit, sometimes we'll see just a series of number signs to let us know that the information doesn't fit. However, if you look in a department, you notice it says sales and research, human re text, it doesn't fit and it doesn't give you a clue as to it. So I'm going to select over here to select all of my cells. Then I choose to click in between columns D and E. When I do that, because all my cells were selected, it went ahead and resized everything. Now my numbers will all fit. My departments all fit. Even my names and the SID is now fitting. So that was a real quick and easy fix to make sure we could see all of our data. Now, sometimes we'll have one column that's really, really wide and we'll need to bring it in. But that's a whole different story. Now, the very first row is a series of column headers. And I don't have styles like I did in Microsoft Word. However, there are a few options I can do. So I'm going to choose Format as a Table. Choose this as a dropdown. And now notice I've got a lot of styles I can pick from, including light, medium, and dark styles. So I'm going to pick one style right here. And it's going to ask me, hey, is this where my data is? Excel is smart enough to try to figure out how many rows and columns you have. Yes, it is. And then it asks me, it says, does my table have headers? And yes, it does. I'm going to click OK. And you're going to notice this across the top. It's going to change my header information. It's now dark blue. My rows are now alternating colors. And I have a little bit of extra space. This just makes everything a little bit easier for me to read. So it was a nice way to automatically format my information. My higher dates, you notice, are all in month, day, year format. I can select all my dates, drop down. I can choose short date, which is what they currently are right now, long date, or I can choose more number formats. When I choose more number formats, you'll notice I'm automatically given other ways of formatting, including things that are not necessarily in the same order. So, for example, here we're doing year, month, day. Or I can choose to do month and day and skip the year. I can choose to spell things out. So I have a lot of different possibilities that I can do. I can even go into custom and completely change and make it completely unique as to how I want to do. Now, I'm just going to come over here to date, adjust like this, and double click in between E and F to make it so it auto formats. This is what I'm expecting. And now I get a column auto selected just as I'd expect. Now, I don't have a title in here. I really wish I did. So I'm going to select my first row, right click, and choose insert. And notice that's going to insert a new row above my existing row. And I'm going to choose employee list. However, employee list is kind of lost because it's the exact same size as everything else. So if I want this to stand out, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to select my cell, change my font size. Now it stands out a little bit more. I'm going to hold my shift key and select E. This has multiple columns selected. And under alignment, I'm going to choose merge and center. And you even see a little icon of what this is going to look like it's going to do for you. 
So now I have something that stands out. It's bigger in font size and it's centered over my whole table. If I adjust my column sizes for whatever reason going forward, this will stay centered in the middle of all my columns because I essentially merge this into one big cell. I can come over here to my cell styles. You notice I have normal, bad, neutral, good, or I can click down here and see others. So while I don't have normal types of headings and stuff typically seen, I can select in here and auto select something to make it a little bit more standard if I'm interested in that. So I can choose one of their built-in styles or I can build my own if I want. If I use the built-in styles, then I get to use the themes that comes with Microsoft Office. Now, one of the interesting things, if we do the style and we format this as a table, you'll notice, for example, I have little drop-down bars by my column headings. And so you see, okay, well, what would that matter? Well, I can come over here to Department, and I can, for example, say, you know what, I only want to find everyone in Finance. So I'm going to unclick Select All, select Finances, choose OK, and now I only see my employees dealing with finance. Notice it shows me rows 1, 2, and then jumps down to 27, 37, etc. Notice that also my little drop down has changed because now it's a filtered. So if I want to change that again, I can change this here. And I might choose Customer Service and Customer Relations. Click OK. And this gives me both. Because maybe these two departments are underneath the same vice president. I need to find all of their people. So I can choose between one and all of my values. Now, some things might be a little bit different. So, for example, I might not want to have to choose and look for a person's name. So I can go and do a search. And let's say I can't remember exactly how a last name is spelled. But I remember how it starts. So I'm going to go M A. And you'll notice that now it's only finding values that have M and A in it. Now, they don't have to start with it. So that's the reason why we have Bowman and Freeman. But now I can see Martinez and Mathis and Mayer. And I can go down this list. It's simplified exactly what I want. If I go to M-A-Y, now I'm down to just a couple of places that I want. So I can uncheck everything, only select those two. Click OK, and now I see just those two people. So it gives me a lot of flexibility. Let's go back and select all. Dates are going to be different. If I select a drop down arrow for my date, notice I have date filters. So for example, I can find everything in this year. These are two people who were hired this year. Likewise, I can come over here and say last year. Or I can do by weeks or months or dates in between two ranges. This gives me a lot of flexibility with how I want to use something like this. So being able to do some specialized filtering becomes really helpful. I'm going to clear the filter from my higher date. And this is going to bring me back so I can see everyone. This gives me ways I can display some information very easily for myself. It allows me to filter out some information and I can control who and what I see really simply using Excel in this manner.